everybody welcome to another video this one's just going to be a quick gun cleaning video so if you know how to clean spray guns it's probably of no interest to you whatsoever but it's designed for people that, that are not sure and i've had about six or seven people over the past three or four months contact me asking me to do a video so i thought i would do so what we need apart from obviously a couple of spray guns to clean what we need is we need a blue roll or cotton cloth something like that but a blue roll's ideal nice something that's nice and absorbent a squirty bottle i always use a squirty bottle because it gives you something with a bit of pressure we'll see that when i'm actually using it but it needs to be chemical resistant because we're going to use uh, a gun wash thinner so it's a uh, it's, it's a non-virgin th thinner so it, it's you wouldn't use it to thin base coat down so you normally call it like a gun wash uh, thinners it's not not like the pure 2k thinners that you would use for your paint um, so we use that to clean it with some kind of old container this is just an old ice cream container be careful because some different ice cream containers fall to bits when you've got thinners in them so just test it first or any container really um, to put your thinners in and a decent pair of gloves now these things are, are chemical these are solvex but you can get other makes as well the, these are are much much better than nitrile gloves if you use nitrile gloves you'll find that they'll fall to bits really quickly uh, you know within the first wash whereas these things will last probably to last probably two months of daily use or near daily use anyway um and then they're much much better and they save your fingers they save your skin going dry etc and you'll also need a spanner now, normally you get a spanner from the manufacturers uh some manufacturers have stopped doing that but most manufacturers will give you a spanner. If not, obviously you'll need a spanner and that's to remove the tip. So I'm gonna stick the um, camera on my head and we're gonna run through how to, uh, how to clean a spray gun and just the way I do it. Okay guys, so I forgot to mention you'll need a brush of some description. I just use this as an old paintbrush. I've been using that for probably about a year or so. So we've got a gun here. This is a side cup gun. It works exactly the same for a top cup top cup gun obviously so this has got clear coat in it you'll see there's some a bit of clear coat left so what we're going to do is we'll tip the clear coat out into a suitable container to dispose of later and then what I do and it's obviously it's the same if, if there's base coat in there as well it's actually better if there's base coat in there I just put some normal cleaning thinners into the into the pot like that if you're using pps you don't need to bother obviously put your finger over the top give it a shake and all you're doing is cleaning around the inside and then take it to i just have a little cloth here take it to a cloth and you'll see it comes out slowly or hardly and then suddenly it will start rushing out and that's just where the initial clear coat has been cleared out by the thinners inside and then give it another sluice around and just let that run through and it just runs through the gum and it just saves the thinners that you're going to clean in from becoming too dirty really so that should be enough if it's base coat or particularly primer do it again put another lot in there and let it run through you can put it in a container i just put it in a cloth and then it just uh, evaporates so we've initially got our run through and we've uh, done a partial clean it just uh, it just means that your thinners last for longer so we'll initially pour anything we got back in there we'll do our pot and our lid get it out of the way as i say people that use pps adapters will find that obviously they don't need to do this i don't use pps adapters um, well i have i've got some actually i don't often use them let's put it that way because I don't, what I don't want to do is um, spend loads of money really on um, pots and I find this, this is actually more economical. So we're putting our pot in, we're just turning our pot round like that and that just gets an even coating all the way round and then we just put our brush in and go all the way round like that. So we're cleaning the inside of our pot out and then we just do the same with the outside, just clean the outside of the pot like so and over there and I just get a little bit of neat thinners in a little spray container put it around like that and you'll see it come out and it will just come out the end of the con container out the pot there and we just put it upside down there 
and then this this is part of your blue roll that will just soak it up and then we'll take our needle out first so we take our needle out the back we can put the cap in as well put the spring in now this needle is always a pain to come out on these because they haven't got a shoulder on them so pull that back so that you can get as much of the needle as you can there's no like no nothing to grip on Whereas uh, with a lot of them these days, you have. So we'll take the cap off, and when we take the cap off, you'll see that what I'll do is I will actually place it face down. So the, the air horns, two air horns here, will be in the fluid. Place it down so that it's in the fluid. And then anything that's caught in the air horns, in the holes, can be starting to be attacked by the, uh, by the thinners. And then we'll whip this off. And just unscrew that like so and we'll put this in again to let the thinners actually get I could do with a, a smaller pair of gloves actually these are extra extra large and they're just too big but they were they were cheaper so I got them uh, anyway so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put the, the straight thinners through and all it will do is it will clean the passageway through and clean where the tip goes in and just give it like that give it well 10 or 12 little pumps like that and then what I do is I keep the gun facing downwards and just point that in there just to clean out in there and again through there and then what I'll do you notice I've left the regulator on that will become apparent why I've done that at the moment I'll just literally brush over the outside of the gum like so and then we'll just put it on the airline and blow it through we can turn that up if we want to he says and that just makes sure that it's all flowed through the gun and then I'll leave the gun facing downwards so that again we're not letting basically what we don't want we don't want thinners entering back into the gun because it can cause problems later with this this part here where the the air seals and that are so it can cause problems so it's best to do that and also if you've got guns that have got electronic gauges in here then again that causes problems let's give that a little wipe over that causes problems in in here with the, with the actual gauge so always keep it down sartre in fact recommend plugging it in and keeping a small amount of air running through while you're cleaning it over i've never found that necessary and all my sartres with digital gauges still work so yeah i mean you just have to be careful so we just clean the tip up not the tip up the cap up like that and we'll put that across there and you'll see that i'll just make sure that it's flowing through there nicely hopefully you can see that and again i'll turn it around do the other side and then plop that there and we'll do the same with the tip just make sure we're getting that i'm trying to get you so that you can see it going through the tip like that and then we'll just clean the air holes like that and just leave that to dry again needle just literally like that cap again any paint might be on it where you've adjusted it like so and don't forget your spring and that's that did we do the cap? I don't think we did the cap. Normally I do the cap straight away, so do that like so. And like so. So it's pretty straightforward really, and we'll just leave that to dry out. I'm going to do the same with this one. And we're just literally, obviously it's the same with that. You literally like so and so and so. Uh, one of the things I was going to say is when you're doing these be careful not he says to immerse the gun in the thinners people often think that they can immerse the guns in the thinners and some manufacturers well most manufacturers actually will tell you not to do that but you know 
some manufacturers are better than others in that they're more resistant to that but you really don't want to be doing that i've never found it necessary to do that i've always found this works perfectly keeps the gun nice and clean again we're doing it upwards keeping the gun facing downwards we got our pressure on so we just put that there put the pressure straight through i cover that up just to get the pressure coming through here but that's that and again this is a bigger this is a full size gun so it's a bigger tip again we just make sure that we're getting fluid through and that's really all you need to do and the rest of it is self explanatory really so yep got a nice jet through there nice jet through both of those and so on so we've done that and now it's just a matter of leaving it to evaporate i always just clean my brush off like that put the lid back on this and that's good for another day that's good for probably 20 cleans depends how mucky it is but it's good for about 20 cleans and then what i do with the excess stuff when it's finished i just put it in a, a tin i've got some fisheries that i'm a member of and we you know we have fires up there so i just take it down there and we use it for fires but if not take it to your local recycling center or something like that to um to get rid of it basically and then we're, what we do is we'll put it together and then i'll just we just literally put the gun together and then we we'll just wipe it over with um a dry cloth uh, sorry a dry cloth a cloth just wetted wet wetted with thinners and it just puts the shine back on the gun so we'll do that in a second uh, and then it's job done so normally what i do is i just leave them to dry for a little while uh, i'm not going to in this case because i just want to finish the video really so i normally uh, put them back together without gloves because as i say most of it is dry so i always do the tips up just nip them up i never do them up too tight you can put i keep a little pot of um petroleum jelly here this one's vaseline but petroleum jelly you can put a little bit along the needle here and it just lubricates the packing gland just there i don't bother anymore i always used to but a couple of times i think i must have got it slightly on the tip and although i put thinners before i actually spray you know I, I've, I've decided not to and i haven't had actually any um detrimental effects from that but you can put a little bit on there if you want and just put put them together like so i'm you know not telling you how to put a spray gun together what i actually do when i put these the caps back on as i say these are wet normally it would be dry because i just leave them to dry when i put the caps back on like that i normally don't do them up too tight because there's a uh, packing seals around here and if you do them up too tight they can get um effectively squashed for too long so i always do them up quite loose whether that's a good thing or not i have no idea it, it seems to work anyway so you get uh, normally a clean piece of cloth just put your thinners on it like that and then you can just get these things nice and sparkling and then when you've finished finished if you're doing it like i am here wet so there's going to be some thinners stuck in the cap etc try and get it out by going like that as you can see and that's it job done just got that one to put together anyway i hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the video guys thanks for watching as always cheers bye bye